If you're looking to become a metaverse entrepreneur, this video is for you. I'm going to explain to you everything you need to know about running your MetaVenture shop, how to apply for one, and how to set yourself up for success in the metaverse. Before I dive into the settings of the actual MetaVenture, I want to explain how to register and how to get yourself set up. Before you actually jump in and register for your MetaVenture, you have to do some thinking first. You have to decide what type of MetaVenture you actually want to set up and on what property do you want to have that MetaVenture. This web page here is on the Upland Guide website and you can learn everything about MetaVentures, whether it be from dev shops to becoming a sub-merchant and selling your own assets in someone else's MetaVenture and the registration process for creating your own MetaVenture. If you're still contemplating what type of MetaVenture to open or whether you want to open one up in the first place, this webpage will help you start to create the foundation of a business plan that you can use in the metaverse. If you are able to go through this list of topics and find answers to all of these topics, you have a good chance of creating a successful business. If there's something here that you have difficulty defining or you're unable to think of something that is suitable, then that might mean that you have some sort of a hole in your business plan and it might not be successful. The more detailed your plan is and the more you are able to refine and answer these questions, the higher the likelihood is that you are going to be successful. So I really encourage you to head over to this webpage and put in the work to create a solid business plan. Once you've done that, you're going to want to head over to the Metaverse registration page on the Upland Guide website, where it goes over everything you need to have prepared in order to launch your MetaVenture, including all of the different graphics and sizes that you need. This is another list that you should absolutely go over prior to registering for your MetaVenture. Now, once you have your business plan in place, there's this form that you have to fill out within Upland in order to actually register. It says the application process time is seven to 10 days. From my experience, it has been quite a lot longer. Hopefully Upland is able to improve their internal processes to bring it back down to the seven to 10 days. At some point in time, you will receive an email indicating if you have been accepted or rejected from opening up a MetaVenture. And if you are approved, then you will have another 10 days to submit your shop graphics. Following that, after some period of time, your MetaVenture will show up on the map and you are ready to go. Once you have a MetaVenture set up, there are a number of different important settings that you need to configure before getting started. So the first thing we want to do is review the store settings. Here you can see the store capacity, which is the maximum number of items that you can have on sale at your shop at any given time. And this is a function of the type of structure that you have on your property. The larger the structure, the more items you will be able to list in your store. The next thing you need to decide as a MetaVenture owner is if you are going to allow sub-merchants. Allowing submissions of sub-merchants means that you are going to allow other players to list their assets in your shop for a commission. By turning this off, that means that you are preventing people from doing that and you are the only player who can list items in your shop for sale. If you decide not to allow sub-merchants in your shop, the default commission and, and auto-expire fields are not relevant to you. You can toggle this option on and off whenever you'd like. If you do decide to allow sub-merchants, you will receive a commission on every sale that is made. The minimum amount of commission that you can take is 2%, and the maximum is all the way up to 10% at increments of 0.05%. When a player attempts to list an item in your shop for sale, they will see the amount of commission that you as a shop owner will be making. And this auto expire field means that how long does the asset have to stay in the shop before you as the shop owner or the sub merchant himself can remove the item from the store. The maximum is seven days and the minimum is one day. If you decide to list your own item in your shop, then you don't have to pay this commission to yourself and the auto expiry is zero days, so you can remove it whenever you'd like. If you start your shop off at 2% commission and some players list some items and you decide to increase your commission to let's say 2.2%, then from this point moving forward, all new items that are trying to be listed in your shop will have this new commission rate. Whatever is already in your store does not change. The same goes for the length of time that the asset has to be in your shop. The next important thing is the venture dues. Every month on the first of each month, each MetaVenture holder has to pay venture dues. I believe you have until the seventh of every month in order to pay this, 
and if you do not pay this amount, then Upland will shut down your MetaVenture. The MetaVenture dues are a factor of the number of MetaVentures of that exact same type in the city, in addition to the median revenue that all of these shops brought in for the previous month. A complete explanation of how this works can be found also on the Upland Guide website, where we explain exactly how this is calculated. In short, it's likely that you can expect that as more meta ventures of the exact same type open up in the same city, that these venture dues will increase. As the dues increase, some shop owners might decide that it doesn't make economic sense for them to continue operating their shop in this city or at all, and they might decide to close the shop or move it to a different city where the venture dues are less, thus bringing the total number of meta ventures of that type down, thus also decreasing the venture dues for the following month. Again, as the venture dues decrease, people might decide to move their shops back into the city, and this will fluctuate until we enter some sort of equilibrium of the right amount of meta ventures that will exist in the city. So I'm going to go ahead and pay this right now. And here I have the confirmation. It says you may continue operating Dale's Deluxe Drivers this month. In the future, I believe that paying these MetaVenture dues will not be done in this way. There is an account called Upland Bureau, which I believe will act something like a city hall, where you will have to travel there in the future in order to pay these dues. This is just purely speculation. If you want to learn more about what I think the Upland Bureau account is all about, take a look at the link in the upper right hand corner. Now, when someone lists an item in your shop, you will receive a message in the menu here. As well, you will also receive an email. We can see here under the NFT listing request, it has the player who's listing the item, the item itself, the price that he's looking to sell it for, and the shop name itself. Now, over at my shop, I can head into settings and I can check the pending requests. And here we can see the item that the player is trying to list. We can go ahead and click on the actual item itself in order to view it. And we can also see that the price that he is looking to sell it for. And in addition to that, you will see how much money that you will get as the shop owner. So here the $2.06 is the 2% commission from the $103 that is the selling price. And by clicking the arrow button, now I am able to decide if I want to accept the offer and have this item be listed in my store for the minimum amount of time that I have defined, or I can go ahead and reject the offer. If I click reject offer, I am able to write up to 200 characters, giving some sort of an explanation to the player, and the player will get an email with that reasoning. Maybe I want to write to him that his price is too high and I don't think that it will sell in my shop, or it might not be something that I'm looking to sell in my shop at all, and this is my opportunity to provide that explanation. Now I'm going to go ahead and accept this item in my shop, and now I can go back into the shop itself, and we can see how it shows up in the listing. Here we can see the price is $108.15, which is more than the listing price of $103 that the player listed it for. And this is because any transaction within Upland, which is player to player, the buyer has to pay an additional 5% on top of the listing price. This is true for properties, and this is also true for items in a meta venture. Now I'm sure you know that as a player who's trying to sell a property on the secondary market, you also have to pay that 5% fee. And you might be wondering what happened to that 5% fee here. And this is done in a little bit of a different way in the meta ventures. I talked before about the commission that I am able to set for my store. So the seller of the item is going to be paying a certain amount of commission. And that commission comes to me as the business owner, as the meta venture owner at the beginning of each month in order to keep my shop open, I have to pay these venture dues. And that would be my portion of these fees. So both the 5% paid by the buyer of the item and the venture dues that I pay each month are both paid into the community pool. Now any player is able to come into the store and purchase this item just by clicking on it. However, you as the meta venture owner are not actually able to purchase the items that are located in your shop. If you're curious about this community pool and where exactly these additional fees are going, you can take a look at the link in the upper right hand corner to learn more about the Upland economy, the community pool, as well as the Upland pool. Now let's say my shop is already at capacity, but I want to make room for a new legit. In order to do that, I want to go back out of the settings, head over to list my block explorer, and there's a tab here for sale. 
This includes not only your block explorers that you have listed for sale, but all of the other block explorers that are currently in your shop. We can see that there is a countdown on some of these items which have yet to complete their minimum holding time before you can remove them from the shop. So here on any of these legits, I can just go ahead and click the X button and it will ask me to confirm that I want to remove the item and I can do that if I want. You as the shop owner or the person who listed the legit themselves, after this time period has expired, they can go in and remove it from sale. In contrast from listing your block explorer, in order to remove it, you do not actually have to send yourself to the shop in order to perform this action. If you have any questions about starting up a MetaVenture or operating it, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out to me on Discord. Once again, you can find information in the link in the description below, as well as by watching some of these videos down below.